Welcome to Lesson 2 in Virtual Flight Academy, VFT. In this lesson we will see a general categories of aircraft and concentrate on fixed wing aircraft, then we will know the major structural stresses on airframe and principal airframe units. As we said in this lesson we will focus on fixed wing aircraft, so we will go in depth in its fuselage types, design, and construction. Let's begin. An aircraft is a device that is used for or is intended to be used for flight in the air. Major categories of aircraft are airplane, rotorcraft, glider, and lighter than air vehicles. Each of these may be divided further by major distinguishing features of the aircraft, such as airships and balloons. Both are lighter than air aircraft but have differentiating features and are operated differently. The concentration of this lesson is on the airframe of aircraft, specifically, the fuselage, booms, nacelles, cowlings, fairings, airfoil surfaces, and landing gear. Also included are the various accessories and controls that accompany these structures. Note that the rotors of a helicopter are considered part of the airframe since they are actually rotating wings. By contrast, propellers and rotating airfoils of an engine on an airplane are not considered part of the airframe. The most common aircraft is the fixed-wing aircraft. As the name implies, the wings on this type of flying machine are attached to the fuselage and are not intended to move independently in a fashion that results in the creation of lift. One, two, or three sets of wings have all been successfully utilized. Rotary wing aircraft such as helicopters are also widespread. This course discusses features and maintenance aspects common to both fixed wing and rotary wing categories of aircraft. Also, in certain cases, explanations focus on information specific to only one or the other. Glider airframes are very similar to fixed wing aircraft. Unless otherwise noted, maintenance practices described for fixed wing aircraft also apply to gliders. The same is true for lighter-than-air aircraft, although thorough coverage of the unique airframe structures and maintenance practices for lighter-than-air flying machines is not included in this course. The airframe of a fixed-wing aircraft consists of five principal units, the fuselage, wings, stabilizers, flight control surfaces, and landing gear. Helicopter airframes consist of the fuselage, main rotor, and related gearbox, tail rotor, on helicopters with a single main rotor, and the landing gear. Airframe structural components are constructed from a wide variety of materials. The earliest aircraft were constructed primarily of wood. Steel tubing and the most common material, aluminum, followed. Many newly certified aircraft are built from molded composite materials, such as carbon fiber. Structural members of an aircraft's fuselage include stringers, long aerons, ribs, bulkheads, and more. The main structural member in a wing is called the wing spar. The skin of aircraft can also be made from a variety of materials, ranging from impregnated fabric to plywood, aluminum, or composites. Under the skin and attached to the structural fuselage are the many components that support airframe function. The entire airframe and its components are joined by rivets bolts, screws, and other fasteners. Welding, adhesives, and special bonding techniques are also used. Major structural stresses. Aircraft structural members are designed to carry a load or to resist stress. In designing an aircraft, Every square inch of wing and fuselage, every rib, spar, and even each metal fitting must be considered in relation to the physical characteristics of the material of which it is made. Every part of the aircraft must be planned to carry the load to be imposed upon it. The determination of such loads is called stress analysis. Although planning the design is not the function of the aircraft technician, it is nevertheless, Important that the technician understand and appreciate the stresses involved in order to avoid changes in the original design through improper repairs. The term stress is often used interchangeably with the word strain. While related, they are not the same thing. External loads or forces cause stress. Stress is a material's internal resistance, 
or counterforce, that opposes deformation. The degree of deformation of a material is strain. When a material is subjected to a load or force, that material is deformed, regardless of how strong the material is or how light the load is. There are five major stresses to which all aircraft are subjected. Tension. Compression. Torsion. Shear. Bending. Tension is the stress that resists a force that tends to pull something apart. The engine pulls the aircraft forward, but air resistance tries to hold it back. The result is tension, which stretches the aircraft. The tensile strength of a material is measured in pounds per square inch and is calculated by dividing the load, in pounds, required to pull the material apart by its cross-sectional area, in square inches. Compression is the stress that resists a crushing force. The compressive strength of a material is also measured in pounds per square inch. Compression is the stress that tends to shorten or squeeze aircraft parts. Torsion is the stress that produces twisting. While moving the aircraft forward, the engine also tends to twist it to one side, but other aircraft components hold it on course. Thus, torsion is created. The torsion strength of a material is its resistance to twisting or torque. Shear is the stress that resists the force tending to cause one layer of a material to slide over an adjacent layer. Two riveted plates in tension subject the rivets to a shearing force. Usually, the shearing strength of a material is either equal to or less than its tensile or compressive strength. Aircraft parts, especially screws, bolts, and rivets, are often subject to a shearing force. Bending stress is a combination of compression and tension. The rod in has been shortened, compressed, on the inside of the bend and stretched on the outside of the bend. A single member of the structure may be subjected to a combination of stresses. In most cases, the structural members are designed to carry end loads rather than side loads. They are designed to be subjected to tension or compression rather than bending. Strength or resistance to the external loads imposed during operation may be the principal requirement in certain structures. However, there are numerous other characteristics in addition to designing to control the five major stresses that engineers must consider. For example, cowling, fairings, and similar parts may not be subject to significant loads requiring a high degree of strength. However, these parts must have streamlined shapes to meet aerodynamic requirements, such as reducing drag or directing airflow. Pressurization Many aircraft are pressurized. This means that air is pumped into the cabin after takeoff and a difference in pressure between the air inside the cabin and the air outside the cabin is established. This differential is regulated and maintained. In this manner, enough oxygen is made available for passengers to breathe normally and move around the cabin without special equipment at high altitudes. Pressurization causes significant stress on the fuselage structure and adds to the complexity of design. In addition to withstanding the difference in pressure between the air inside and outside the cabin, cycling from unpressurized to pressurized and back again each flight causes metal fatigue. To deal with these impacts and the other stresses of flight, nearly all pressurized aircraft are semi-monocoque in design. Pressurized fuselage structures undergo extensive periodic inspections to ensure that any damage is discovered and repaired. Repeated weakness or failure in an area of structure may require that section of the fuselage be modified or redesigned. Fixed-wing aircraft Fuselage The fuselage is the main structure or body of the fixed-wing aircraft. It provides space for cargo, controls, accessories, passengers, and other equipment. In single-engine aircraft, the fuselage houses the power plant. In multi-engine aircraft the engines may be either in the fuselage, attached to the fuselage, or suspended from the wing structure. There are two general types of fuselage construction. Truss and monocoque. Truss type. A truss is a rigid framework made up of members, such as beams, struts, and bars to resist deformation by applied loads. The truss framed fuselage is generally covered with fabric. The truss type fuselage frame is usually constructed of steel tubing welded together in such a manner that all members of the truss can carry both tension and compression loads. 
In some aircraft, principally the light, single-engine models, truss fuselage frames may be constructed of aluminum alloy and may be riveted or bolted into one piece, with cross-bracing achieved by using solid rods or tubes. Monocoque Type The monocoque, single-shell, fuselage relies largely on the strength of the skin or covering to carry the primary loads. The design may be divided into two classes. Monocoque and semi-monocoque. Different portions of the same fuselage may belong to either of the two classes, but most modern aircraft are considered to be of semi-monocoque type construction. The true monocoque construction uses formers, frame assemblies, and bulkheads to give shape to the fuselage. The heaviest of these structural members are located at intervals to carry concentrated loads and at points where fittings are used to attach other units such as wings, power plants, and stabilizers. Since no other bracing members are present, the skin must carry the primary stresses and keep the fuselage rigid. Thus, the biggest problem involved in monocoque construction is maintaining enough strength while keeping the weight within allowable limits. Semi-monocoque type To overcome the strength-slash-weight problem of monocoque construction, a modification called semi-monocoque construction was developed. It also consists of frame assemblies, bulkheads, and formers as used in the monocoque design but, additionally, the skin is reinforced by longitudinal members called long aerons. Long aerons usually extend across several frame members and help the skin support primary bending loads. They are typically made of aluminum alloy either of a single piece or a built-up construction. Stringers are also used in the semi-monocoque fuselage. These longitudinal members are typically more numerous and lighter in weight than the long aerons. They come in a variety of shapes and are usually made from single-piece aluminum alloy extrusions or formed aluminum. Stringers have some rigidity but are chiefly used for giving shape and for attachment of the skin. Stringers and long aerons together prevent tension and compression from bending the fuselage. Other bracing between the long aerons and stringers can also be used. Often referred to as web members, these additional support pieces may be installed vertically or diagonally. It must be noted that manufacturers use different nomenclature to describe structural members. For example, there is often little difference between some rings, frames, and formers. One manufacturer may call the same type of brace a ring or a frame. Manufacturer instructions and specifications for a specific aircraft are the best guides. The semi-monocoque fuselage is constructed primarily of alloys of aluminum and magnesium, although steel and titanium are sometimes found in areas of high temperatures. Individually, no one of the aforementioned components is strong enough to carry the loads imposed during flight and landing. But, when combined, those components form a strong, rigid framework. This is accomplished with gussets, rivets, nuts and bolts, screws, and even friction stir welding. A gusset is a type of connection bracket that adds strength. To summarize, in semi-monocoque fuselages, the strong, heavy long aerons hold the bulkheads and formers, and these, in turn, hold the stringers, braces, web members, etc. All are designed to be attached together and to the skin to achieve the full strength benefits of semi-monocoque design. It is important to recognize that the metal skin or covering carries part of the load. The fuselage skin thickness can vary with the load carried and the stresses sustained at a particular location. The advantages of the semi-monocoque fuselage are many. The bulkheads, frames, stringers, and long aerons facilitate the design and construction of a streamlined fuselage that is both rigid and strong. Spreading loads among these structures and the skin means no single piece is failure critical. This means that a semi-monocoque fuselage, because of its stressed skin construction, may withstand considerable damage and still be strong enough to hold together. Fuselages are generally constructed in two or more sections. On small aircraft, they are generally made in two or three sections, while larger aircraft may be made up of as many as six sections or more before being assembled. This is the end of lesson two. If you have any questions, suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. In the next lesson we will show you some of the major wing configurations and structures.
subscribe to our academy channel and stay tuned to see our new lessons and videos.